lessons that have been developed um, that you can access for different grade levels in science and math and literature and so on. And they're all based on uh, the <clears throat> these three principles, which means that we have multiple means of representing, of representation, meaning this supports recognition learning. So we don't just present information to students in just one way. We always have two or three. Um, right now, I'm talking to you, but I'm also showing slides, and I'm giving you handouts, and so on. So there's a number of ways that, uh, that you hopefully can access what I'm telling you. And we have to provide access for those with cognitive, physical, or perceptual barriers. So basically um, what this means, and again, um, one of the things that I, uh, that I did in all my classes that I taught at Landmark and do in the high school summer program that I teach here and advocate is basically have all the reading materials digital digitized. So, which used to seem like, which seems like a big thing, but it's really not hard to do, so that students can have access to the reading material. Whether they can read, read everything by themselves or not, some students can read perfectly well, other students can read slowly, so having a text reader will help them uh, will remove some barriers of decoding and, and slow processing. Um, and some students really, you know, are really limited in reading and need to have materials uh, available to be read to them from a digital source so that they can continue their intellectual growth, uh, despite the fact that they have significant um, impairments, um, deficits in their ability to decode words. So, as a result, when I taught a critical reading class at Landmark College, um, and I had 10 students in my class, and I would say uh, six of them uh, could read all the materials independently. <coughs> um, but there are other good reasons to have them available digitally, too, because you can you can work with them and, uh, and things, and then eat, uh, I like digital text a lot. And one of them um, could read short things, but was kind of slow, so often needed to use a text reader for, like we use Kurzweil 3000, which we use here too, to help with long assignments. And then another three were really dependent on Kurzweil, but the thing is, we're all doing the same work. They're all doing the same work. Nobody's getting an easier text. Everybody is expected to meet the course requirements because they have, um, they have access to the materials through various kinds of technology and so on. That's one example there. Then, we also look for, in a, in, a, in a really robust, universally designed educational environment, that um, multiple means of action and expression. So we support strategic learning, meaning that you don't necessarily have to produce a five paragraph essay on something to show that you know the topic. It could be in the form of a graphic organizer. It could be in the form of um, a PowerPoint presentation. It could be in, the f in, in multiple formats, um, as long as the, cri the criteria for the project or the assignment can be met in those different areas. Now, I'm not saying that means that, that students never have to write a five-paragraph essay, but they don't have to do it every time, and they don't have to do it you know, that there's other, other, other ways to, um, to show learning. And then the third one supports the affective learning emotional side 
which is multiple means of engagement. So, students, the student who is doing is the student who is learning. So we want to figure out how to really engage students in learning uh, because if they're engaged in learning, they're going to feel more comfortable with it and they're going to be more positive about it and they're more likely to, instead of feeling like, I'll never do this, never, ever, I just can't do this, there's no point in trying, that in fact, actually, with hard work, and persistence, I can do this. I can succeed. And if you can flip that switch from total dead frustration over to, okay, it's going to take work, but it's worth it to me, then you are, you have, that's at least half the battle right there. Um, so, okay, so how, how do we do this? Well, Let's talk about you know, the recognition learning, being able to recognize patterns, being able to uh, manipulate them, and uh, uh, so on. So we want students to recognize patterns, so we want them uh, to do things like present. Here, for example, is here we have, we're looking at monomials, binomials, and trinomials. And so we want to see, we want them to see the pattern so we have it in a nice graphic organizer where the monomials are all in red, the binomials are in blue, and the trinomials are in um, <clears throat> black only if I could have them in green, but somehow green didn't come out or it doesn't come out like green. Anyway, I've also got non-examples, which you know is important to be able to say, okay, here's the way, here's the pattern, this is the way it was. And this one may look like it, but it's an, it, it doesn't. This is not, this is, this, though if the terms can be combined, then it's not a binomial. The thing that's really frustrating about this particular graphic organizer. I did a project uh, a few years ago um, on uh, that was uh, a grant project to provide a website, a universally designed website to support students in community colleges who were in developmental math courses. And, and I was a learning specialist on this so I had to do you know <clears throat> workshops with math teachers at three different community colleges and uh, so I show them this, I've researched it, I've taken, I've audited an algebra class all semester and so on, and, 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 and this is, you know, an example created by a really good um, uh, <clears throat> math uh, educators, and one of the math teachers says, you know, actually, I'm not really sure that everything isn't a mono meal in the long run, you know. And I'm thinking, I can't do this, you know. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> finally, um, so, and she goes on and so on. And finally, my, 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 the head of the project who was there with me said, can you at least see the principle behind this? Not, you know, oh, yes, I can see that. Thank you. You know, it's like, nah. You know, you wonder why kids don't do so well in math some of the times. Okay, so um, then the other thing, and a lot of this has to do with really being clear about what you want students to learn. Here, you highlight critical features and show the students the features of the pattern you want them to learn. So here's this pattern, features. Here's an example of that. Come on. This is this come this is supposed to come and it's not coming. What's happening here? I wonder if it's underneath. Oh, something. Okay. Yes. There it is. Okay. Um, so here's an example: actual student work, where um, 
the student is studying geography, continents, and so on, and the, we want the student to recognize features of the pattern. So here are mountains, rivers. And you know, map symbols are kind of a good example of that. Um, so they don't just show the continent, we're also going for a little more specificity that the continents will have mountains and they'll have rivers and they'll have north and south. And